talking about what it means to be fruit-bearing discipleship. <coughs> if you want to take on a characteristic of something, say, say you're an athlete and you want to join the team, there are things you do. First of all, there's a coach or coaches. And you listen and do what the coaches tell you to do. There's a team that you will associate yourself with. And so you want to be a partaker, you want to be a companion, you want to be a teammate. And the common goal for a team is not only win games, but to also get better, to perform. And a team generally has a uniform. And the uniform all looks the same, with the exception of the numbers. To promote, we are a team, to promote that we are unified, to promote that we adhere and belong to something greater than ourselves individually. We understand that in that realm. We need to kind of understand that in the spiritual journey as well. So in John chapter 15, we're going to look at these verses here. We're going to be looking at verses 1 through 17 today. Now remember, Jesus is telling his disciples he's about to leave. And the disciples are very anxious about this. Jesus' teaching is actually starting to intensify because Jesus is just a few hours away from the cross. And Jesus is, is saying things to his disciples to give them peace, to let their hearts not be troubled, and to remember that when this happens, where they are to remain. He says, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes, that it may bear more fruit. Already you are clean because of the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit from apart from me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is thrown away like a branch and withers, and the branches are gathered and thrown into the fire and burned. If you abide in me and my word abides in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. By this my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit, and so prove to be my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments, and abide in his love. These things I have spoken to you, that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be full. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that someone lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends, if you do what I command you. No longer do I call you servants, for the servant does not know what his master is doing, but I call you friends. For all that I have heard from my Father I have made known to you. You do not choose me, but I chose you. And appointed you that you should go and bear fruit, and that your fruit should abide, so that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give it to you. These things I command you, so that you will love one another. It's a very beautiful read. It's also a very challenging and convicting read if you slow it down and read it. The things that we need to understand is that what does the Lord desire from his disciples? Surely he desires the heart. He desires the faithfulness. 
He desires the obedience. But He also desires our hands and our feet. If we love Jesus with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength, if we love God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength, then we will be about doing what the Lord does. We will be about His business. It's important to notice, notice that we cannot earn salvation. That's a gift. When we put on Christ in baptism and we surrender ourselves, the work that is done in that salvation is what the Lord has done. God is doing the work of saving us. We are surrendering ourselves to Him. And He is cleansing us and making us whole. And He is adding us to the family. He is forgiving us of all of our sins. And we rise out of that water a new creature. And as a result of that salvation that we are given, we should be joyfully, joyfully looking for ways to serve Him with our hands and with our feet. Serving Him with every ounce of our being because of what He's done for us. Because of the sacrifice that He has made for us. Works are an important part of discipleship. We are created in Christ for this very purpose. And by them, by our works, we glorify God. And that should be the center focal point of our life, is whatever we say and whatever we do, it is to glorify our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It is to glorify our Father in Heaven. Amen. Bearing fruit is necessary to being a disciple. We must allow God to prune us. Glorifying God by bearing fruit is a mark of discipleship. Disciples have been appointed to bear fruit. You are a disciple of Christ. If you have put on Christ in baptism, you are a disciple of Christ. And God expects you, and He expects me, to bear fruit. And He prunes us. He, he cuts off the little bits that don't need to be there so we can bear more fruit. Now here's something that's interesting about pruning. I am not a horticulturist. Horticulture is not my forte. I, 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 I'm, I do animals. I'm working with animals. Husbandry is more kind of my thing. But, if I'm a pair, I know I'm kind of shaped like one, but whatever. If I'm a pair, and Christ is the apple, and I'm grafted, and he grafts me onto that vine, I am no longer just a pair. Now, I have some pair traits about me that, that are gifts that he's giving me. But I have a lot of apple in me now. Huh? I'll be a crab apple? <laughs> really? really? And, 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 and there's some here who are going to be grapes, and some here are going to be apricots, and some are going to be muscadines, and some... The point is, you're grafted on to the true vine. And you take on the nature and the nurture and the characteristics of Christ. And we are pruned in such a way that what is not needed is taken off. And what's left is there for the purpose of bearing more fruit. And that is something we must allow God to do. God must be allowed in for the purpose of pruning us. That's not always comfortable. That's not always easy. That's sometimes very challenging. Sometimes it's also painful. But the beauty that comes from the pruning that bears the fruit. Because if we are not allowed, or if we do not allow Christ in, He makes it very clear. Otherwise, we're cut off. And that branch that is not bearing fruit is cut off and set aside. And when you're cut off, that sap is no longer running through you. And you wither up and you shrivel up. And then you're eventually gathered up and thrown into the fire. And I think we know exactly what Christ is talking about. 
For Christ the true vine and his father is the vine dresser. But we do not want to be branches that do not bear fruit. It's just like a tree, a fruit tree or, or, or a vine. If that part of that tree or that part of that vine is not bearing fruit, you cut it off. So the rest of the tree or the rest of the vine can flourish. And the end is burned. The end of unfruitful discipleship is dreadful to contemplate. And like the Hebrew writer in Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 9, I wish to be more confident of better things regarding our discipleship. We must be ready and willing and able to go out into the world and bear fruit. Fruit bearing is contingent on abiding in Christ. Not only do we abide in Christ, and that is His Word, abiding in His teaching, but Christ also must abide in us. You cannot take this book, the Scriptures, and just read it and think that's enough. You cannot just come to worship and sit in a pew and listen to songs, maybe even sing songs, and participate in communion, and listen to a sermon and think that's enough. It's not. We are called and we are commanded to be disciples of all nations. We must be convicted of what we find in Scripture. We must be convicted of what we hear about in our lessons and the songs that we sing. Convicted to a point that stirs us that we have to go out. We cannot keep quiet. We must share. We must know Christ. The central, central focal point of bearing fruit, the very first thing we must do as disciples is know the Savior. We must abide in Him as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself. The only way we can bear fruit is to abide in Christ. And how can we abide in Christ? The very first thing we must do and that we all know is we've got to teach somebody about Jesus Christ. Once we're taught and convicted and we, and we profess that Jesus Christ is Lord, we put Him on in baptism. Making Him our Lord and Savior. Surrendering ourselves to His authority. Rising up out of those waters, a new creature. That's the first thing. Then by abiding in His love through keeping His commandments. Did you notice He says that over and over and over again in this, in this section? Matter of fact, He said this several times up to this point. He's telling them, you've got to do what I've commanded you to do. That's what the way the disciple does. For those of you who play sports, if you don't do what the coach tells you, what happens? You're not a player anymore. Or he's going to let you go ahead and get exposed. If you're not going to, if you're not going to tackle the way I tell you to tackle, you're going to take on the most fearsome running back we have. He's going to run you over. Because you're going to learn. One way or the other. But if you don't take on the teachings of a coach, you're no longer a part of the team. Taking on the characteristics of Christ is putting Him on in all things and all phases of our lives. And we must bear fruit. Keep Him with His commandments. Bearing fruit is manifested in various ways. One of the most obvious things we must be doing as Christians is we must be winning souls to Christ. We must be evangelistic. Each one of us is an evangelist. Whether we like it or not. Whether we're afraid of it or not. When you put on Christ in baptism, you also made a promise that you're going to tell somebody about Jesus Christ. Because that's part of being a follower of Jesus. And I know that concept sometimes scares people half to death. I don't know what to say. I don't know what I will do. The very first thing you do is notice that you can't do it. 
That's why you have God in your side. And that's why you have the Holy Spirit dwelling within you. You can do it with God. Being a soul winner for Jesus, winning souls ascribed to Christ, as expressed by Paul in his desire to go to Rome. All Paul wanted to do was go to Rome, to spread the gospel. Disciples creating more disciples is a natural indication of bearing fruit. Another thing that we do as bearing fruit is we share with those in need. We have to be looking around for people who are in need. And then when we see that person that's in need, we act upon it. Making sure that the needs are being met. We also must also continue to develop a Christ-like character. And the only way to, the only way to develop Christ characteristics is we got to know who Christ is. You see, it doesn't matter if you're only one month down the journey of your faith walk or 65 or 70 years down, your, down the journey of faith walk. You must continue to let God work on you. You must continue to let God deeper and deeper in. Rooting out the things that don't need to be there. Pruning you. Cultivating you. For the very purpose of bringing Him glory and bearing fruit. Another thing that we can do is give God the praise He so richly deserves and giving Him thanks. Being thankful for what He's done. Giving Him the praise because He's worthy of it. The fruit of our lips and praise and prayer are spiritual sacrifices. Singing these wonderful, beautiful songs to our Lord stirs us and it should stir us in a way that we want to serve Him more and more. As we bear fruit in these different ways, we not only glorify God and prove to be fruitful disciples, we also experience the abundant life of which Jesus speaks about. Remember in John chapter 10, in verse 10, he says, I give you life, life abundantly. It's not just a life, it is an abundant life. That is what Christ desires for us. Not just any old, regular old, boring life. But a life that is made of abundance. And that's what He desires for you and me. And because of that abundant living, bearing fruit leads to a fulfilled life. Because winning souls, winning souls should bring us a lot of joy. And it produces that joy. If you've ever had a hand in teaching someone the gospel, and then watching that person being immersed in baptism. What does that do for you? Does that fill you with such joy and, 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 and pride that you're just so happy for that person? Knowing, and also knowing you have a small heart in that. And it should bring us such joy that I want to do this again. This feels good. And it's okay to feel good. God gave us emotions. He's given us feelings. Winning souls produces joy. Sharing with others should produce happiness. When there's people who are down, who, whether it's nature who's, who's wreaked havoc and has, has knocked someone down, or whatever the case may be that someone finds themselves in need, Man, when we meet somebody's need and, how, and, and see on their face and their eyes of how humble they are and how thankful they are, <clears throat> that should bring us happiness. To see that we have met someone's need. So much so that man, when the opportunity comes again, we're going to do it again. Because, man, there's no feeling like this, like serving the Lord. And watching that joy come across someone's face. When it needed to be met. And here's something else about 
developing a Christ-like character. This produces assurance. We all need it. We all need assurance. Do we not? Every one of us longs for assurance. Just like a child needs an assurance from their parents that they're going to be taken care of. Christ here is doing the same thing with his disciples. Giving them assurance that they're going to be taken care of. They're going to be provided for. Christ said, I'm not leaving you as orphans. I'm giving you another helper. You're not going to be abandoned. You're going to be taken care of. We all need an assurance. Because it gives us peace. It keeps anxiety at bay. It keeps the fears at bay. So my challenge for me, and maybe for you, and when I'm starting to feel anxious about things, or when I'm starting to feel fearful about things, maybe I need to look to Christ and the promises that He's made and the assurance that comes with those things. And then looking back at our lives and how God has taken care of us, praising God and giving thanks should produce peace. Each and every one of us can look back in our lives <laughs> through the rough seasons of our lives and see how God has brought us through. And those are evidences of how God is faithful. And when we latch on to those things, that should bring about peace, saying, no matter what's thrown at me, Cancer may come tomorrow. A car wreck may come tomorrow. Devastation of some sort may come tomorrow. But I'm anchored and rooted in Christ, giving Him the praise and glory He so richly deserves. And no matter what happens, <coughs> peace is there. Because here's the thing about peace. God is there through us and with us in the storms. And we're anchored to Him. And that's where that peace comes from. It's not peace that, we, that, that, we, that we're in outside of storms. It's the peace that we have while we're in the storm. And each and every one of us has those stories that we know about. But all this is possible only if we remain in the vine. All this is possible only if we abide in Christ. Because that's where the life-giving flow comes from. So why is fruit-bearing discipleship so important? It is necessary to be, faith, to be a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. It is necessary to be, to be a fulfilled disciple of Christ. So the question then is this. Who have you talked to this week about Jesus? And if you haven't, make up your mind that you want to talk to someone this week about Jesus. Make up your minds to show the world what it means to be a follower of Jesus through our actions and through our words and through our deeds. Because scripture tells us to be a light to all nations. We're the ones that mentor. We're the ones that shows what it's like to be Christ-like. How else are they going to know about Jesus if we don't open our lips? How else is a need going to be met unless we're actively looking for it? Always giving praise and thanks for what Jesus Christ has done in our lives. Whatever your need is this morning, and however way that we can help you, we ask that you come down and stand in the